Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. Before we start our math part of the webinar, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Miriam. I'm the math instructor at Penn Foster. I am here uh, at Penn Foster since October 2015. I'm certified to teach high school math in the state of Pennsylvania. And also I have a master's degree in urban education and I did earn that uh, 2017. Let's start with note taking. Whenever you study for any subject, whether it's a high school course or a college course or a training through your job, you need to note take. You need to learn how to note take so you are taking away the most important points from a lecture, from a written um, lesson, from a webinar, and so on. So how would you study for a math lesson? The first thing I find useful is to thoughtfully read the lesson. So we have to read. Uh, we need to read text to, to be able to learn information. It's not the only way available, but it is one of the important ways that we read. And we read, we read in a quiet place. Uh, we read in a comfortable place. We concentrate while reading. We do not have loud music, you know, people around us while reading that math lesson. We really need to, when we read, we need to have some comprehension going on whenever we read the lesson. Another point I find important whenever you're trying to uh, note take, whenever you're uh, studying for a math lesson, is to Take notice of the important points that you find while you're reading. So you're reading a three-page lesson, lesson, for example. That lesson that has three pages maybe has three or four main ideas, no more. So you need to make sure to point at those important points. With math, usually they are formulas, important examples, for example, um, sometimes definitions of keywords, sometimes um, shapes or uh, figures that you need to keep in your notebook as your notes to refer to later in the exam. All of these need to be on your notebook. Another third point whenever you are trying to note take is to summarize what you read. I've talked to a lot of students who basically rewrite everything they read in the lesson word for word. And that's, that's not note taking, that's basically copying whatever you read. So the, 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 the point of note taking is to read the lesson, comprehend it, and then write it again in your own words, in your own understanding. So that is a key a uh, point on note taking. It, it works for any subject and also it works for math. Another point I find so important is to keep your notes appealing. So you can use arrows, you can use abbreviation just to keep everything short, charts, flow charts, diagrams. You can use colors, highlighters, uh, pens, pencils, stickers, whatever makes your notes neat, easy to understand when you go back to it to prepare for the exam. And it has everything you need from that lesson. In this slide, I brought a section from the reading from the lesson of fractions, and I just wanted to show you how would I take notes from that section. So this section is talking about how to add and subtract unlike fractions. So when I'm taking notes, I'm going to make note of the title itself. It says unlike fractions. That means that there are like fractions and unlike fractions. So I decide to um, write down that flow chart, reminding myself that fractions ha have two kind of, um, of them based on the denominator, so like or unlike. And again, I put the definition, what is a like fraction? They have the same denominators. What are unlike fractions? They have different denominators. And then I go on and list the rules. 
the lesson itself has the rules listed for steps to add or subtract unlike fractions. I'm not going to go ahead and write down those steps word for word as it appears in the lesson, but instead I'm going to go ahead and summarize or put those steps in my own words based on my understanding or comprehension. I can use colors, I can use um, bubbles like here, I can circle things that are keywords like the LCD, the least common denominator is a keyword in this lesson, I think, um, and so on. So this part of my notes did summarize main ideas, did order the steps I need to take in my own words, it looks appealing to me, and I'm willing to use again whenever I'm taking my exam or preparing for my exam. Next, how can we practice for math? So I speak to lots of students and they say, I did watch a ton of videos and I still do not get it. What should I do? I always say that resources, um, whether they are readings or recorded lectures from your lesson or recorded uh, videos from awesome teachers that they post their, um, you know, their lectures on YouTube or any other um, kind of site is useful. And definitely look for, look for them, use them. Um, you don't have to use everything out there, but definitely pick the best that you uh, think is useful and for sure use the lesson and the practice. Now, it's not, um, sufficient for anyone to learn math by just watching a video. If I watch someone that um, add those two fractions together, it's not enough for me to learn how I can do it myself. So the key point here is to practice and practice as much as you can. Within your lesson, there are discover more questions provided and they are relevant to the lesson, relevant to the exam, take your time, open up a, a notebook and write down the question clearly, practice and practice. And when you submit your answers through the discover more box in your portal, you are provided with the answer key. Then you can compare the answer key with what you've got. If they are matching, then you're done. You're good in that concept. If not, then try it again and try to find out where you've messed up. And this is how we learn. When you are beginning to learn math, it is always a good habit to do your work once and then repeat it again, just to make sure you subtract it correctly. You did find the right LCD. By doing this and by time, you do not need then to check your answers anymore. You're just going to be able to find the right answer from the first time. But as a beginner, I recommend that you repeat the steps again. And if you find that your answer, the first answer is the same as your second answer, that is a confirmation that you did everything correctly and probably your answer is correct. If you got some of the answers incorrect, do not get discouraged. We all fail sometimes, and this is how we learn to improve. So if you did a question, you did compare your answer with the answer key, it turned out to be incorrect, do not give up. You just want to go back and see where you have added incorrectly. Where did you, did you miss, um, write a number here or there? Did you treat an addition like subtraction? And once you know where you usually miss up, this is when you're going to remember it and probably you're going to avoid that uh, mistake again. My last advice to you is to be patient on yourself, learning any new skill. Uh, takes time, takes patience, takes practice. Think about learning how to drive a car. Think about how to, um, how you, uh, if you decided to learn a new language, how, how much time and practice it will take you. Even if you get a new job, how much effort and time and practice it takes you to get used to the new tasks in your new job. So be patient on yourself, use the resources, practice and practice and practice. And at the end, if you need help, we are here for you. How would you prepare for the exam? 
you need to read your lessons. Nothing is easy. Nothing is straightforward that you just read the lesson. Next day, you get 100 in the exam. I mean, unless you have a background knowledge about fractions, that's something else. But if you still understanding fractions, it's your first time really to work uh, in depth with fractions, I would recommend that you take your time, read your lessons, um, uh, use your resources, take notes. Uh, do not get discouraged. Do the practice questions. Spend your time because you really want good grades on your transcript. You want a good GPA. So when you apply for college or a career program, uh, later on, your GPA is a good GPA that you have multiple chances to go different places, not limited to one or two places. The answer here, again, is provided for the, those discover more questions so you can self-assess yourself. You can watch this webinar again. I'm going to again send the three full webinars on this one um, unit through the message center. So keep an eye on your inbox. Take the exam only when you are ready. Only when you are ready. And if you happen to take the exam once and you did not do well as you expected for yourself, then restudy and retake the exam. I wish all of you best of luck. And I'm here for you if you have any questions on this lesson. Have a good day.